there, I'm Angela. Welcome to the channel or welcome back. I'm so glad you stopped in and this is another very delayed episode of Hashtag Friday Sews. Hey y'all, thanks again for joining me. And just to get a little bit of housekeeping out of the way up front and then we'll jump into sewing and life. So I owe you guys a stash update and you probably know if you follow my channel for a little while that I have a hashtag thing going on this year to help me sew down my stash. It's hashtag stash sew down 2023. And at the beginning of the year, I had counted up all my yardage of garment fabric and number of pieces and yardage and kind of made a pledge to myself that I would sew at least half of that before I allowed myself to buy any new fabric. So I am plugging away. It's slow. I'm hoping that I can get halfway through it by the end of this year. We'll see. I'm, that's why I, I'm doing these um, little check-ins with you guys every Friday. So it's just to kind of do like a little check on how I'm doing. Am I staying the course and so forth? So I am. I have sewn 8.25 yards of my stash. And when I had originally counted my stash, it was like 68 pieces. So that means I needed to sew 34. And I've, with uh, this top here, um, I have sewn four of those pieces of yardage. <laughs> so it's slow, <laughs> little by little, but it's okay. We'll get there. And then also... Thank you guys for the nice words on my blouse here. And I did get a couple of really great tips from some of you guys about um, the issue I had experience with the buckling on the sleeves and so forth. So I appreciated all those good suggestions. And I think I am going to try to alter the sleeves. Uh, just I, It's not like a terrible thing, but it, it's just a little annoying when I look at them and see that it's like puckered like that. So there could be a chance that I could get that to lay flatter and or else do something different on the end of the sleeve like with a ruffle or a cuff or something so i may give that a go i'm kind of still in full steam ahead with my uh, capsule wardrobe and i'll talk a little bit more about that here in a moment um, but anyway thanks again um, also thanks to jen from today in jen's sewing room who's the creator of the hashtag friday sews i'm always so thankful that she has provided all of us whether we're making videos, watching videos, doing both, provided us with this great opportunity just to check in with each other every weekend and have chats, whether it's live or in the comments and see what we're all up to, what we got done, what our plans are. So since I finished that top, I have started on uh, piece number four for my capsule. And I don't have the pattern handy, let's see. So the next, yeah, this is what I wanted to share with you guys. So the next piece in my capsule is a simplicity pattern, 2058. It's just for a skirt. And I am kind of, I don't have enough to make the long version, which is what I maybe would prefer to do. Um, but what I do have is enough to maybe make sort of a length in between these two. So I think just like loose laying out of the pieces, like I haven't even cut the pieces out, uh, but I'm getting there. And I think that I have enough for the short version, um, curvy version, and then adding four or five inches on to the length. So it'll fall probably about midway in between the long and the short. So I'll show you guys. Um, first, I'll show you the pictures of the skirt and then this is like an illustration. It shows the difference between the curvy. They have slim, average, uh, slim, average, and curvy. I am doing the curvy, and then I'll flip it over and show you the line drawings there. And I'm using a, a little, I already have the yardage of what I'm using kind of laid out nicely on my sewing table. So I don't want to mess with that because I have it folded and salvages together. So I'm going to leave that there. But I did cut a piece to take to Joann's to get a zipper. So I'll kind of bring that in. It's got some stretch to it. It's a piece that I picked up from Style Maker Fabric uh, last year, maybe in the fall of last year. And it's... um 
I want to say it's like buttery reversible suede or something like that. I'll put some details up here or in um, the description box below in case you're interested in what it's made out of and so forth. And it does have a nice amount of stretch, which I think will be really good for this particular type of skirt. And what they call for, they call, you could make this skirt out of just about anything it looks like. Laundered cottons, batiks, lightweight denim, pique, poplin, twill, sateen, lightweight wool and wool blends, crepe, chalet, crepe de chine, laundered silks and rayons, double georgette, matte jerseys, soft, weight, li soft lightweight linen, and linen blends. So almost everything under the sun. So that makes this really versatile. And this is an amazing fit pattern. I don't think I've ever sewn an amazing fit pattern. I do have a few of them, so I'm really excited to see how this process goes and how the instructions are. Yeah, I don't think I've made an amazing fit. Oh, not off the top of my head, I don't recall, but it's in like this blue, like a, a dusty grayed down blue, which wrong side. I had, kind of been moving these pieces from one hook to the, I have two doors here and each has a hook on it. So this will go really nicely. I think it will anyway with this vest that's part of my capsule. So there is some blue in here that's close to this. And I think that, you know, it goes pretty good with this mustardy gold color. So I'm looking forward to doing that. So I did have to get, um, a zipper so when i went to joann's i was looking at their invisible zippers and they don't have as many colors of invisible zippers as they do for any other type of zipper like the regular zippers so i had to kind of make do with this gray it's called slate and you'll be able to see through the package that's showing up pretty good i think and i feel like it's it's not like a stark difference. And if I do it right, you shouldn't be able to see the zipper, right? You should maybe just the little pull tab there. So I think that this will be okay. Uh, I almost thought for half a minute about looking online to see if I could find an invisible zipper closer to this color. Um, but I kind of just want to move this along. And I, I didn't want to spend too much time searching and then ordering. And I think that this will do okay. Um, and probably with this skirt, I'm going to be wearing something like a longer top or topper over it. So it's really going to hide a good portion of the zipper anyway. So I wasn't too worried about that. But I was able to find a really good um, match on the thread. So I feel like it's closer in real life than it's showing up on the video. But I was really happy about that. And then it also called for twill tape, and I couldn't find twill tape at Joann's other than maybe it was like a white or a beige. So I got this soft and easy hem tape. So depending on how this is going to be used, which I should have checked my pattern first, I feel like um, if it's just going to be to like stabilize a, a seam or something, I think this will do fine. And I know this is on the inside and won't show at all, but it's always nice to kind of find a good. A good match isn't it with colors i love that so of course while i was at um joann's i had to take a look at their patterns just to see if they had any on sale and i'm to the point now where i don't actively go out and like check for the like when are the sales coming up and everything but if i happen to be there for some other reason um, i do go ahead and see if any are on sale so Right now, they have Butterick and Vogue, Butterick for $1.99. So I picked up a couple of those, and I'll share those with you. This first one is B6882. I like the square neckline on that. I really like that a lot. And I think um, I will probably end up just making the dress on this rather than the top. But I really like that. I'll show you the line drawings. I hope that's focusing in enough for you to see. So it does include a little topper, the dress, a top, a pair of pants, and a belt. So yeah, it includes 
everything you see here pretty much, which is nice. And then the other Butterick that I got was B6893. This is a jumpsuit and a dress. And the one that I love on this pattern is the sleeveless version here. I like the jumpsuit too. I'm just not sure if I would ever make that. I might. If V over at 85th and Wade does her jumpsuit challenge again this fall, maybe this could be like a candidate for that. But I do love the dress. And I'll show you the line drawings there. And as far as fabrics for this first one, calls for cotton blends, ponte, gabardine, crepe, tweed, and linen. Something with, with some structure to it, it sounds like, which kind of makes sense looking at, um, you know, looking at the garments here. And then for this Butterick dress and jumper, calls for crepe, rayon, crepe back satin, and chalet. Definitely more flowy fabrics for that, which is, you looking at the illustrations in the model dress, so it's not a surprise. And then also Vogue were on sale for $5.99. So I did pick up one. It's B1898. It's um, a designer pattern, Bag Bag Bagdali Mishka. I'm never sure how to say that designer's name. And then it's just the one dress. That's all you get. And it just comes in one length. Yeah, I really like this a lot. Let's get a little closer. I like that little tie there. Let's see what they say. And for fabrics, jacquard, linen, Ankara, and poplin. And it is lined. And it does have the one thing that I will change when I make this. If you look at the neckline, it's really plunging. Like that's way too plunging for my comfort level. So I would either wear like a camisole under it or something like that, or somehow bring um, the two sides together and secure them. Other than that, I love this dress. It's so pretty. I'll read you the description because it has a, a really in-depth description. Uh, line dress has plunging neckline with tie, notch collar with collar stand. That'll be something new for me. I've not ever sewed anything with a collar stand. Sleeves with turn back cuffs, invisible back zipper, and hook and eye closure, side seam pockets, flared skirt, and narrow hem. I want you to look at the back too. Here's the collar they were talking about. Isn't that just cute? I like that quite a bit. And then of course the cuffed sleeves. A lot of details that make this dress just darling. I guess that's what you get with a designer pattern. <laughs> And that's about it as far as sewing for this past week. And in life, it's been pretty quiet. I did start getting some of my seeds in. Seed starting is here, and it's hard to believe. And if you haven't noticed, I had my hair colored. I was kind of uh, wanting something a little bit brighter, so I kind of went back to blonde. And I've had it dark for so long now that it was kind of a shocker. She used the foil on it. Um, but heavily have because rather than doing all over, she just did foil, but it was like a lot of foils that she used. And at first I thought, Oh, this is too bright. I'm not, I don't like it. <laughs> you know, I don't have you guys ever had that reaction when you make a change or something. And then at first you're like, Whoa, I don't, I don't like it. Um, but then my husband liked it and I thought, well, just live with it for a few days. So it's been like three days now and I'm kind of getting used to it. I do like it. I was thinking for a minute I might have her put like a toner on it just to calm it down a little bit. Um, but she did say what I could do is use um, like the purple shampoo, which is supposed to counteract some of the brassiness and blonde. So I did that today. I let it sit on there for about 15 minutes and I feel like it kind of took some of the brassy like orange out of it and it's a little more blonde now, but I'm still kind of getting used to it. Um, I love the cut though. I had it cut too. So it was getting a little bit too crazy in the back there. So I had her shorten it and um, like layer it up a little more. So I, I'm loving that. It feels like free, like, ah, 
get that off of my neck, <laughs> especially as we're heading into warm weather. And I'm, I'm sorry I do not have a featured channel for you this week. I do have a couple of suggestions and from you guys, and so those are in the pipeline. And I love it when you guys give me good channels to kind of check out and feature. So going forward, I won't, you know, I can't promise that I'll do a feature channel every Friday so's, but when I can, and I have like time enough to really watch the channel and do it justice, I'll go ahead and like stick a channel into the video. So, and I do have a couple of those lined up. So I look forward to that. And that's about all I have today. I know this was a really short one. I hope that you guys have had a good weekend. I hope you've had a great weekend. Did you get any sewing done? Let me know in the comments. Um, I love chatting with you guys in the comments. And until then, I will try to have a video for you midweek this coming week. Um, we'll kind of see it. It depends on how much progress I make on this. Um, I don't think I'll have it finished unless I do nothing but sew all day tomorrow, which I might do. We'll see. I do have to get my pepper seeds in, so that'll take a little time. But if I have something to share with you guys midweek, I will. And if not, I will see you next weekend for the next Friday Sews. Hope you have a great week. I'll talk to you later. Bye.